Islands are a collection of islands that belong to Scotland that are at the very most northern part of Britain. I'm going to be here for the next few days showing you around but I'm not alone here so I want to introduce you to the team I'm with and why we have come to the Shetland Islands because the reason is super cool and I'm so excited to be involved in this project. I'm Marco, I am from Milan in Italy and I'm a DJ. Hey my name is Flora and I'm a food fitness and sustainability blogger and vlogger from Bristol. Hi my name is Andrea, I'm a photographer and I'm from Napoli. Hi, I am Sam, I am originally from Yorkshire and I live in London and I'm a videographer. And then there's me, I'm Christiane, I'm from Surrey in England and I'm a travel vlogger. But it is Marco who is responsible for why we are all here. So Marco, why are we all up here in the Shetland Islands? So during lockdown I was bored, I wanted to travel but it wasn't possible. So I decided to go on Google Maps and drop the pin in random locations. And after dropping a, a bit of times in the ocean, then I landed here in Balta Sound and I started looking at the pictures. It was amazing, mostly foggy, but amazing. So I decided I wanted to go here and to explore as much as I could of the island. But me, myself, it wasn't enough because we only have like three days. So I wanted to come with good company and people that could explore together with me so that we could get a better perspective of the island from different point of views. And that's what we are here for. <laughs> Right now we are in Sumbera on the main island of Shetland which is where the airport is. We flew from London Heathrow to Aberdeen and then Aberdeen to here. The other way of getting to Shetland Islands would be by overnight ferry from mainland Scotland. Today we are going to be exploring this island and then tomorrow we are going to be taking two ferries across to the islands of Unst where we will be shooting Marco's music video. <laughs> The island of Shetland is absolutely jaw-dropping right from the get-go. Our first stop was up at Sumbera Head, where there is a lighthouse marking the southern tip of mainland Shetland. This area is particularly notable for its steep cliffs and being one of Britain's most accessible seabird colonies. <laughs> we can see puffins! <laughs> up at the top, there's also a gorgeous little cafe. So after a quick bite to eat, we met up with Laurie, who is a local tour guide here in Shetland. She first took us to Giles Hof, which is now one of Europe's most important archeological sites, as people have been living, working, and building here for 4,000 years. As you move around the site, you can see how the buildings have altered over time, which means it's quite a confusing place to wrap your head around. It's it's even a challenge for archaeologists to deconstruct as people have literally been building, abandoning and rebuilding settlements here one on top of the other for thousands of years. Look how beautiful this bay is and no one's here. I feel like that's going to be a consistent in, um, in the Shetland Islands, just absolutely untouched paradise. Look at that, can you see that down there? That's seals. They chose a very good spot, didn't they? That beach is absolutely stunning. So we're now on our way to St Ninian's Island, I believe that's what it's called, and on pictures it looks insane like the beach has these crystal clear blue waters unfortunately none of us are in our swimmers right now so i can't imagine we'll be swimming but i cannot wait to have a look we've made it to st ninian's isle and it is just Stunning. It's like Thailand, you know, in Koh Tao, where they have that beach that separates the two ocean inlets. It's a lot like that, and it is gorgeous. There is actually a name for what I'm describing. When a beach or a bar connects two islands or an island to a mainland, it's called a tombolo. Occasionally, during major storms and wind driven tides, the waves breach over the sandbar, making it impossible to cross to the island. But luckily for us, it was a calm summer's day so we could cross over. St. Ninian's Isle was actually inhabited until 1775, but since then, it's just been used for sheep grazing. Not a bad home for the sheep, I must say. <laughs> Da, 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 da. 
So we were just at Tesco's in Lerick, I think is how you pronounce it, which is like the main town on the mainland in Shetland. And then Sophia just said that we have a surprise and that is that we're having a fiddle performance by a local here in Lerick. Look how clear that water is, as if! They say Shetland is a land of fiddlers. Back in the day, they used to play reels for dancing and hymn-like music for listening. For weddings, there was always a fiddler leading the procession, eventually playing the newlyweds right into their bedroom. This particular song is the bridal march for the island of Unst, which is the island we'll be heading to tomorrow. Where are we, Flora? We are at Booster House Hotel. Yes. Booster. Yeah, Booster, I Booster think. Booster House, we... House Hotel for dinner. Yeah. Very exciting. I'm so sorry, I actually forgot to record anything at dinner because I ate it too quickly. But I just want to let you know that it's quarter past 10 in the evening now. And this is how light it is. The sun is still not going to be setting for another half an hour. And I don't think I've ever, ever, ever experienced that, where it's still light, so late. It's very, very, very strange. And like Flora said, it feels a bit like jet lag. And I am the one <laughs> responsible for opening the car, so I'm going to do that now. Good morning, everybody, from Hillswick, which is right at the north of the mainland Shetland in the Shetland Islands. We have woken up with this beautiful, beautiful view. We were so tired last night because we had just an action packed day and then arrived at the hotel at like 11 o'clock at night. So I just absolutely conked out but it's a fairly early start for us this morning we just had breakfast in the hotel which was absolutely lovely i was getting like swiss kind of cabin in the mountains vibes actually because everything was just like wood and um yeah it was just absolutely gorgeous and it was a nice big breakfast and we're up fairly early because we are getting the ferry to Unst. actually two ferries we're going in the car i think we're going to stay in the car and um, that is going to be our final destination and it's going to be a big day of filming today. We are on the ferry and it's really disorientating because there's literally no windows but you can see the sky like moving above us very very slowly I don't know if you can see that. What does this mean we're gonna be leaving? Honestly I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> opening it up for us. So maybe this means that we've arrived, at least on the middle island, which I believe is called Yell. The most notable thing about driving directly through the island of Yell is the sheer nothingness here. Very few buildings, but also literally no trees. Native trees disappeared from the Shetland Islands around 5,000 years ago, mainly due to early agriculture. The worst drinking game in the world would be to drink every time you see a tree in this vlog. Look how clear this water is. This is the Shetland Islands flag and what I really like about it is the fact that it's literally 
a mixture between the Scottish and Scandinavian flags. Obviously, you've got the Scottish flag colours, but the Scandinavian cross. That's a really nice way of showing how the Shetland Islands is a kind of mixture of the two and how the people here identify themselves as a bit of both. We've started shooting for the day for Marco's music video. I'm not involved in the music video other than I'm helping out, so I am the driver today. We've got Flora, who's going to be running, and then we've got Andrea, who's going to be on his motorbike, and Sam's helping out with the filming as well, and I have the role of being the driver, and I just have to go at a very steady pace so that we keep up with uh, Flora a good place to have her shooting and look at how beautiful this is look how blue that water is we're quite close to the start of the Hermaness nature reserve which is actually where we're going to be hiking tomorrow um, but we've come here already because it's absolutely gorgeous Marco's vision for the Bolter Sound music video involved showing unique perspectives of the location from the eyes of an eagle runner and motorcyclist and the music video is actually out now on Marco's YouTube channel. The link is at the top of the description, so definitely go and check that out to see what the final product of the shoot was. It's by far one of the most epic and unique projects I've ever had the pleasure of being involved with. So the fun thing about the island of Umst, because it is the most northern island in Britain, it means that everything on the island of Umst is the most northern of its kind in Britain. So up here, this white and red building, this is the most northern post office in the whole of Britain. The most northerly point of national cycle route. It's quarter to 11 at night. We were thinking about going to sleep, but then we thought that the sky looked pretty cool. So we've driven across the island to a place called Westing Beach, which we've heard is a good place to watch the sunset. And can confirm it's a very nice place to watch the sunset. It's 20 past three in the morning. The sun rises at 3.30. Look at that. We're now on the east side of the island of Unst and we've been staying in this little house called Hag Hagiworth? Hanigar. Hanigar. It's really, really close to Easting Beach, which is a famous beach here on the island for being very, very beautiful. I'm gonna try and head down there now if we can find the right way, but we think it's literally just gonna be across this field. Oh my goodness, look at all the sheep on this beach. Oh, white sand, sunrise. You ready to go in? Oh, when it bought a sound. You only live once, Marco. I don't wanna hear what I'm doing. <laughs> Are you ready, team? Are you ready? Are you ready, Marco? I bang my head against the wall Yes, somehow I just can't I was 
stronger than I am. <laughs> <laughs> How are you feeling? Not that bad actually. <laughs> not that bad. No. It was worse inside. Be like honest, be honest. No, I'm not <laughs> <now>. <laughs> I don't know what temperature that water is. But it's cold. I feel exhilarated. After three hours sleep. Oh my goodness. I'm so confused as to why I feel so okay and not that cold right now. And I'm here in a bikini, not even shivering. What is this? What is this reverse psychology? I am confused, but I'm not complaining. That was crazy. <laughs> Now I think we're going to dry off and probably go back to sleep to be honest because we've got another three hours, four hours even before other people might even think about start waking up. Look at our little setup. <gasps> good morning, or should I say good afternoon? It is now midday. We had a little bit of downtime after waking up to do that sunrise swim. Um, we actually went back to sleep until about eight o'clock and then we've been chilling, having breakfast. And now we have come to Saxa Vord Distillery, which is of course Britain's most northerly distillery here on the island of Unst in the Shetland Islands. And they're actually putting on a private tour for us this evening, this afternoon normally they're not actually open on a sundays but they've so very kindly opened just for us so flora's here Hiya. and the boys are coming in just a second and this setup is so cute 70% of the UK's gin is made in Scotland. The Saxa Ford Distillery opened in 2014 and has been going from strength to strength ever since. Despite having one of the smallest commercial gin distilleries holding 100 litres, Shetland Real Gins are available across the UK and beyond and people have travelled far and wide to taste some of the Shetland magic. After learning a bit about how the gin is made, we got to know the most famous Shetland Real Gins on the market, the original, Simmer and Ocean Scent. Honestly, I could have sat here all day drinking gin, but alas, we still have more of Shetland to see. Okay, so it's almost time for us to leave the island of Unst, but before we do, we are doing the Hermanus Nature Reserve hike, which I'm so excited for. It's like the iconic hike to do here on this island because it takes you to the very most northerly accessible point of Britain, of entire Britain. And if you were to head directly north from there, you'd get to the North Pole. There's nothing else in the way, which is quite cool. Um, the hike is about 10 kilometers long. It says it should take three to five hours. We are gonna have to do it in three hours because we don't have much more time than that. So you've kind of already done this hike, haven't you? I have, I ran it. It was, um, it was uphill all the way out and then downhill on the way back. So I got to like, three kilometers in and just practically collapsed on the floor. <laughs> How long did that take you? Um, well, it took me about an hour and a half. So we are actually gonna have to walk quite fast to we do it in three hours walk, then. Yeah, yeah, right. like we have to march up this hill. And these two are gonna be droning half the time. <laughs> so we're gonna, to we're gonna have to sprint up. this. Otherwise we will miss our ferry. So cute! You look like my sister's dog! <laughs> or maybe my sister's dog just looks like a sheep. Is this it? Is this the end? Not the end. For, for you, my friend. This is the start of the coastline, right? Oh, so fucking dope. Wow! I can't risk it. This is epic! So we've made our way to the west coast. And this is insane. So dramatic and we're so high up. So now it's just a case of the hike going along the coast and this way is north so if we keep heading that way right to the end we will reach the very most northerly accessible point in Great Britain. Will they fly away if we go closer? Probably. Wow. Puffins! Puffins are sometimes nicknamed as sea parrots, but did you know that their beak actually changes colour during the year? In winter, the beak has a dull grey colour, but in spring, it blooms into this incredible orange. Well, 
Welcome to the northernmost point of the UK. Only Muckle Flugger and Outstack stand between here and the North Pole. The steep path up the hill leads to a ruined lighthouse signalling station. If you wish to go and look, you must return this way. The hilltop is a sensitive bird nesting area. And the birds are sensitive. Trust yes. Me, I know. We see it in the distance. Hopefully we're going to get a little bit closer than that. It's funny because on the Shetland website it says that this hike takes three to five hours, but it's only 10 kilometers and we were kind of all like, it's not going to take us that long. But you just find yourself stopping all the time because every corner you turn or every extra hundred meters you go, the view just gets even more dramatic and more amazing. And you just stop for photos and videos. Oh, well, at least I do as a vlogger. And uh, then you realize, oh yes, the 10 kilometer hike really does take three to five hours. So here we are, at the, the end of the path just kind of takes you to this lookout point on the top of the hill where a lighthouse used to be um, but we can see the Mucklefugger lighthouse over there and this is this is the end point I guess we can say this is Britain's most northerly accessible point pretty cool oh, oh nuzzling mom, mom. This is the walk back down now. I love being able to see the ocean inlet in the middle. Here come the team. What were your first impressions of Bolter Sound? Uh, I, it wasn't like I was thinking. Cause first because it's sunny and it's not sunny. Everyone here said to us that we will, we've been lucky because usually it's not sunny and also the sensation of space. We have so much space and I can feel that there's no, not no one around us. It's just a few of us and nothing else. I really love it. This, this thing and the silence. The only noise that you can hear, except for my music when I play, is the ship, nothing else. And th that's amazing. Here we go. We are back at the ferry terminal at right at the bottom of Unz. We're going to be traveling on the ferry to Yell, going straight through Yell, and then we're going to be spending the evening tonight back on mainland Shetland in Hillswick. My legs are really tired now. That was a big fitness day, a lot of walking around, but so grateful to have been able to do that. And yeah, Unz has been great. What a privilege to have been able to travel up to the most northerly island in Britain. After a quick night in Hillswick, we pressed on continuing south down the mainland island in the direction of Sumbra Airport. We've just stopped in the town of Lerick along the way, which is like the kind of hub main town in Shetland. And it's absolutely gorgeous. We're gonna go for some lunch at the Dowry. Well, it has to be a very quick lunch because we do have a flight to catch, but I think at least we'll go get some coffee and cake and things. So we've got the Shetland Drill Gin in here. I highly recommend a food stop at the Dowry if you ever find yourself in Lerick. The food was absolutely exquisite. And as we sat down for our final meal, we got our hands on the local newspaper called the Shetland Times, where Marco had been featured. It was super cool to see after the crazy weekend we had shooting the music video up in Unst, and your girl got a mention in the newspaper as well. Thank you so much for following this journey up to the Shetland Islands. I hope you enjoyed the video and perhaps learned something new about the Shetland Islands. You can watch the official music video for Bold to Sound by clicking the link on the screen and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!